Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial, this time about Adobe Animate and 10 things you probably did not know about Adobe Animate. Whether you're an advanced user or you're a beginner, these are tricks that are really nice to know when you're working with Adobe Animate. So I've been working with Adobe Animate for at least 20 years, back when it was still with Macromedia and Flash 4. That's where I started in 1999, somewhere around there. So I know a couple of things to make your life easier and I'm gonna show as many as I can. So let's get started with number one. So the first one is synchronized symbols. I often see animators uh, having nested animation like this bouncing ball right here. It's moving from left to right, hits that wall. Uh, but if you look inside the animation, it will actually jump up and down. So it's nested animation, but I often see animators move around keyframes. So for example, I'm gonna move this over here and then you can see that it glitches, it jumps. There we go, there we go right there it just jumps from one point to the other that be, that's because it's actually playing frame 43 instead of frame 18 i move this over and flash will not automatically correct that so what i often see animators do is manually type in the number 18 and we're not going to do that click the layer right click and say synchronize symbols and right now it will move correctly again as you can see it synced number two is match fps match frames per second if you ever had an animation playback like this you can actually see it drop down to about 20 25 even though it's set to 60 frames a second then there's a simple little button right here where you can click a match fps and if you play it now it will always play at the frame rate you set it to so it will never slow down. And if you have streaming audio, that will actually already happen automatically. The next one is bigger layers. Uh, for example, I got some audio right here and I can see the speech. And if I go into Yamcha right there and I am at this mouth layer, you can actually see that I made the layers larger. And that's because I can actually see the sound waves better to make my lip sync. If I right click and click properties, I can actually set it to 100, 200, and 300%, and 100% is default. The next one is taller or shorter layers. We all know this one where you can zoom in and out on your layers, but you can also get a little bit more space by setting your layers to short, medium, medium is by default, or tall. And I always like setting them to short because I get more layers on my screen. The next one I really like is converting multiple layers to symbols. Uh, right here, I got four layers with animation. I can simply click all four of them, right click the layer and say convert layers to symbols. I'm gonna call these cubes and then press enter. And voila, I got all the animations nested inside of another animation and I can move these around and they will keep playing. And the next one is optimize curves. I drew a little smiley face right here and if you zoom in on it, you can see like it's a really crappy line. And I can quickly optimize that by selecting it all. So I'm gonna press Control Alt Shift C or Command Alt Shift C. I got a little pop up and it says optimize curves. And I can actually say how much it should be optimized between zero and 100. Let me let me say just 100, let me full, full optimization. And if I press enter, it will say like the original shapes was 2626 curves and the optimized shape is 74 curves. That also makes your project a little faster and as you can see right now that line is now smooth overdo it and it might get too smooth but that's up to you and that also works on lines there we go 74 to 27 and the next one is scale and rotate well i can actually go right here and then go to transform and then uh, adjust the numbers manually i can also press a button Control alt s or command alt s on mac and I get a little scale and rotate window. So if I type 115 and I'll say 90 degrees, I can scale and rotate whatever I have on screen in one go. Obviously I can also make it smaller and rotate counterclockwise. There we go. The next one is converting lines to fills. For example, I got a line right here and I got a line right here. Uh, this one is uh, using the width tool. So I'm gonna press the width tool and I can actually show it how that works. There we go. If you didn't already know that one, now you do. And I can actually convert these to fills. And that's sometimes really handy uh, because especially with the, with the width tool, the project might get slow at one point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these lines, go to modify, shape, 
convert lines to fills or alt shift f there we go and if you see now right now it's all a fill and i can erase it and i can do everything with it the next one that's a really important one i got a little animation right here and if i got a lot of animation um, i might like select multiple frames and i'm gonna click a classic ease and i want to do some ease in ease out and i'm gonna want to press quad and that actually takes a little bit of time uh, if i if i've got to do that like every time i make some new animation and i actually want to make shortcuts on that and you can actually make your own commands and turn those into shortcuts i'll show you if you go to window and then history or command or control F10, you can actually see exactly what you do every time you select something, you move something, you can see it update right here. And as long as it doesn't have like a little red cross in front of it, you can select it and turn it into a command. So for example, if I click this layer right here, I'm gonna go classic ease and then ease out and then quad, it will actually pop up right there. If I click that and I'm gonna say, save selected steps as a command you can do multiple steps but in this case i'm only going to do one and i'm going to say ease in out quad i'm going to press enter and if i go to my commands you can actually see it right here ease in out quad so if i go to keyboard shortcuts i'm going to type in ease you can see already see that i made a couple of them and one of them is ease in out quad add a shortcut and for example, I'm gonna say five on my numeric keyboard and then I'm gonna press okay. So instead of going through all those menus, I'm just gonna press five on my numeric keyboard. Boop. So in this case, I put in one for ease in, a two for no ease, three for ease out and five for ease in and out. And it saves you a lot of time clicking through these menus. So make those into shortcuts. And you can do that with basically anything through the history panel. There we go. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is the Flanimate power tools, the flash power tools that I really recommend. I mostly use it for the commands and not for the rigging, but you should definitely check it out. These are really nice guys and they do an amazing job. Go check them out. Their tools are free. I put a link in the description to this and all these tools are really nice and really helpful and have helped me along the way. Go check them out. They have a description on each one of them. So be sure to check out what you find interesting. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like and feel free to join the Discord if you want. That's all for today. You can share your tips and tricks as well. Uh, feel free to and see you around. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.